I really think it's the case that you can gauge just how anti-establishment a particular presidential candidate is by looking at the level of stupidity you see in the attacks ran against him in establishment outlets and pro-establishment outlets. And over the course of winter break, we got quite a bit of examples that demonstrates that Bernie Sanders still doesn't have any fans in the establishment. Now, as Ed Kilgore of the New York Intelligencer argues, Bernie Sanders has lost his 2016 mojo, and he doesn't just have one or two reasons. He has six reasons as to why he thinks this is the case. Now, additionally, Jonathan Martin and Sidney Ember of the New York Times claim that it may be hard for Bernie Sanders to hold on to that support base he cultivated in 2016. Now, in my opinion, all of this is nothing more than wishful thinking, because when you look at public opinion polls... They suggest that the opposite is true, but when I get to these media attacks of Bernie Sanders from establishment hacks and loyalists, well, I mean, we're not even scratching the surface because the intra-party battle that Bernie 2020 is catalyzing is already starting to heat up because Third Way actually already started attacking Bernie Sanders with anti-Bernie innuendo as far back as 2017 and they recently ramped up their attacks in an effort to discredit Bernie Sanders in early primary states. But what I like about Bernie Sanders is that he knows that this is all bullshit, it's just posturing by the establishment and he decided to not take these attacks lying down and he decided to respond. Now you may already know what his response is because on December 28th he put out a fundraising email where he actually took on these attacks and hinted that yeah I'm going to be running for president in 2020 most likely without actually officially announcing it. Now as Tim Marson of Newsweek explains Sanders email then noted that a centrist group called Third Way which the email dubbed as Wall Street Democrats was already running ads against him in early primary states. They not only want to discourage or defeat a Sanders candidacy they want to make sure that the progressive agenda is not advanced by anyone the email read. Sanders wrote our agenda terrifies the political and financial establishment of this country, but the truth is, their agenda should terrify all of us. The message from Sanders went on to say that their agenda, funded by wealthy contributors, has led to income inequality, massive healthcare costs, and grotesque amounts of student debt. Matt Bennett, a spokesman for Third Way, claimed that the 2018 midterms showed that Sanders' approach was not the path to beat Trump. It just is not what Democratic and independent voters want, he told The Hill. So yes, it's an honor to to be included in his fundraising effort. He clearly sees us as an influential critic. In the email asking for small donations, Sanders then said that the elite in the United States would work to stop his candidacy. If that happens, the political, financial, and media elite of this country will stop at nothing to defeat us. You know that, the email read via PBS reporter Yamiche Alcindor. We've lived through it together once before. Our ideas terrify them. So what they will do is try to divide us up with attacks, some old, some new, and our political opponents will spend obscene sums of money on ads to defeat us. So I'm glad that Bernie Sanders didn't take these attacks lying down and he responded because if you just simply allow these organizations, these right-wing organizations to attack you, then you're allowing them to frame the terms of the debate. You're allowing them to monopolize what Bernie 2020 will be about. And he has experience now. He knows that you've got to respond quickly to these attacks and nip them in the bud so that way they don't actually get any legs to them. Now, what he's saying here, this fundraising email, if you've read it, you'll see that he knows that the establishment isn't going to stop at anything, and it's very clear that blue dog Democrats, basically Republicans who are moderate, they absolutely will not allow for a Bernie Sanders presidency or nominee even because they know that this is going to hurt the Democratic Party's donor base and in turn that's going to hurt their fundraising efforts. So what I hope will happen is in the event Bernie Sanders wins, in the good event uh, that Hypothetically speaking, Bernie Sanders becomes the Democratic Party's nominee in 2020. This catalyzes party realignment, where the third way, quote, third way Democrats, basically Republicans like Joe Manchin, think that him being the nominee of their party is so unacceptable, they feel as if they have no choice but to flee the party. We need these people to leave the party. They have to leave, they have to exit the Democratic Party and join Republicans because they are basically watering down what it means to be a Democrat. Because currently, when Democrats say, oh, well, Democrats are a Big Ten party, 
it shouldn't be the case, but it's kind of true because you have people on the right, just firmly right wing to the left in the Democratic Party. And that's just not a cohesive way of winning because when you tick that box for a Democrat, you're supposed to know what that means, but we don't know what that means. With Republicans, well, Donald Trump represents not just the party, but the base as well. And people know that that means he's going to be vehemently anti-immigrant. He's going to be in favor of deregulation. But when it comes to Democrats, if you tick the box for a Democrat, you don't really have a sense of what that means in 2019. Does that mean you're ticking the box for a conservative right-wing Democrat who will actually go along with a lot of Donald Trump's agenda? Does that mean you're ticking the box for an AOC-type Democrat? You don't know. So we need both parties to be coherent. And we have coherency on one side, and it's bad coherency with Republicans, and we have an incoherent policy platform on the Democratic Party side. Party realignment will solve this problem, and we need that to happen. But one thing that I didn't really, well, I kind of thought about this, but not seriously, but it's something that I think we should think about. And I heard about this on Chapo. Um, they talked about, in the event Bernie were to become the Democratic Party's nominee, what would be the likelihood that third-way Democrats or centrist Democrats try to run their own, quote, moderate Democrat as a third-party challenge? And in that likely scenario, I've talked about on Twitter or questioned how many of these so-called pragmatic Democrats or centrist Democrats like Neera Tandon don't just all out rationalize voting for Donald Trump. Because when you think about it, economically speaking, they're more ideologically aligned with Donald Trump and the Republicans than Bernie Sanders. They may be disgusted by Donald Trump's social agenda, but that doesn't mean that that is going to get in the way of what really matters to them, which is economics. So how many right-wing Democrats who beat progressives over the head for these purity tests or voting third party in 2016, how many of them actually flip and vote for Trump if the third party option fails them, if they see that someone like Michael Bloomberg clearly is not viable? You know, um, it's going to be interesting. That's basically the takeaway. These attacks prove why we need Bernie, because if the establishment is afraid of him, that means that he actually is anti-establishment, and we need someone who is going to actually shake up the establishment and not be a puppet to the establishment like Donald Trump, because we all know he's not anti-establishment. He's only anti-establishment in the sense that he breaks norms in Washington, D.C., but policy-wise, functionally speaking, he is the establishment. So, we need Bernie Sanders, and it's going to get very, very interesting to see the attacks on him. And uh, we're going to be here to respond to each and every single one of them, because this is a fight for our lives. If we don't get someone who's truly progressive, who's bold, then I don't know what this means for not just American democracy, but the planet. So um, we're going to have to pay attention, because this is already shaping up to be a very... Um, vitriol infused race and he hasn't even announced yet so expect a bombardment of attacks as soon as he announces it's gonna be ugly subscribe if you like this video folks mike's tremendous and he's doing a really really good job many people are telling me about how wonderful the humanist report is bigly 